Building an inlay with a plunge router means you have to use some sort of template. The template is used to guide the plunge router around as you cut out the inlay and the corresponding void. Those two shapes need to be identical and the template is what allows that to occur. Now you can build your own template if you want to. Get a quarter inch thick piece of material, quarter inch thick, that's important. Trace out some sort of shape on it, take it to the jigsaw, cut out the pattern, and now you have your own template. There are two things to consider when selecting a template for your inlay project. The first is, how are you going to affix the template to the workpiece so it doesn't move during the cutting process? If this template slides at all while you're cutting out a void or cutting out an inlay, the two shapes won't match up and you're not going to be happy with the end result. Now to hold the template in place, you can use clamps if you want to, but if you're going to use a clamp, keep in mind that the clamp itself cannot interfere with the base of the router at all during the cutting process. If the clamp interferes with the cutting or with the, the router base, then your cutting bit's not going to make it all the way down to the corner, rather it's going to come across something like this. Once again, your inlay and your void will not match up and you're not going to be happy with the result. What I have found the best method of securing the template to the workpiece is double-sided duct tape. By putting some double-sided duct tape on the back side of the template, I can put my template in place and it's securely held during the cutting process. Now this template here, this is one of the reasons why people think building inlays is so difficult. This is a very difficult template to use because there's not an easy way to secure the template to the, cutting materi to the material being cut. Um, on the back side there's these ridges and that doesn't provide enough surface area for the tape to hold to. And the template itself isn't big enough so if I put a clamp here and here, you know, it's going to interfere with the router base. This is really a pretty poor design so keep that in mind if you're making your own templates. Rather I like templates like this that have a flat surface on the back. I can put tape all the way around the shape I'm cutting on and then when I put it into place it is securely held. The second thing to consider when you're selecting your template for your inlay design is what do the corners of the shape look like? This is the brass inlay kit that goes on to the bottom of the plunge router. Now on the brass inlay kit it has a bushing that you put on when you're cutting out a void and you take off when you're cutting out an inlay. You'll notice that with the bushing on the router bit itself isn't going to make it quite down into the corner as far as it will as when the bushing is off. Because of this, the inlay piece is going to be slightly larger than the void, so you're going to have to do some sanding to get a better fit. It is better that it, your template be designed so your bushing fits all the way into each corner when you're making your cuts. This is especially important if you're creating your own template. Make sure that all corners have the same diameter as this bushing here. So to recap, those the two things that you need to consider when selecting your template is how are you going to affix it to your workpiece and will the router bushing fit all the way into each corner.